Before builders could finish the bridge, they needed to solve another critical problem. It was imperative that the anchor blocks that held the main cables were not able to move. But the ground here was so muddy and weak that the cables could have pulled the anchor blocks out of place. Overcoming this weak link would be the most difficult and dangerous job of the entire project. China's Rinyang Bridge would be the third longest suspension bridge in the world. Loads on its main cables would be enormous. The cables would tug at their anchor blocks with the force of 68 million kilograms. Designers needed to prevent the anchor blocks from moving or the bridge could collapse. To do this, builders would have to extend the anchor blocks at least 30 meters underground. They would be the largest anchor blocks the Chinese had ever built. But when engineers probed the riverbank, they discovered that the soil was worse than muddy. It was laced with underground water. This was a major setback. Engineers would have to find a way to divert the groundwater, or watery mud would pour into any hole they dug. And it could enter so fast that it would trap the men working inside. The engineers devised a plan. They decided to keep the water at bay by erecting a gigantic underground dam. All around the 3,400 square meter site, workers dug a series of trenches. They filled the trenches with rebar and concrete. The walls kept the water out, making it safer to dig within. But there was still a problem. North Shore workers were using China's only deep trench digger. So on the South Shore, the contractors were forced to take a riskier approach. They decided to control the deep underground water by freezing the ground. To do this, they needed to construct a huge refrigeration plant. The plant chilled salt water to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Salt water has a much lower freezing point than fresh. Pipes circulated the water more than 30 meters down, all around the site. This system worked like the coils in a giant freezer. The ultra-cold water froze the soil into a meter-thick wall, and these walls of icy dirt kept the water out. With groundwater no longer circulating inside the two sites, the soil became safer to dig. The excavation went on 24 hours a day, as the crews tried to finish before the summer floods threatened to fill their excavation site with water. These enormous pits would descend at least 30 meters, but every four meters, workers needed to stop to pour concrete braces. The deeper the workers went, the more dangerous the job became. Groundwater was constantly pushing the walls towards collapse, and the deeper the hole, the stronger the pressure. The deeper you dig, the more fishing you have to do. And uh, when it gets very deep, then actually water can come from the bottom, and it can come very, very quick. Six months after digging began, the two anchorages plunged at least nine stories. They looked like parking decks, and were each large enough to park 7,000 cars. Hundreds of men now worked at the two vulnerable sites, and the danger was about to escalate. 
monsoon season and its flooding were just weeks away. Building China's longest suspension bridge required constructing two of the country's biggest anchor blocks. The blocks needed to hold the massive main cable securely or the entire bridge would collapse. So far, workers had excavated 280,000 cubic meters of dirt. But engineers now decided it was too risky to continue. They ordered the crews to the next stage of construction. Workers filled both anchorages with ballast, 310,000 cubic meters of concrete and sand. The Rin Yang's engineers had won their first race against the tumultuous Yangtze and escaped disaster.